Welcome to Indie Resources' first video on building a browser-based MUD slash MMO. This is Halls of Valhalla. Let me start the videos off saying that these are different than the original set of building a browser-based MMO tutorials that I did. Um, those are more turn-based PHP style um, game versus um, what we're going to do here is more real-time JavaScript, things like that. Um, I didn't want to take that those videos in that game and alter it and change it and turn it into JavaScript just because uh, that game was built around the turn-based system. I wanted to build something that was we would be using that's more real-time that people could branch off of and use however they want. Um, don't let don't let the mud thing scare you. The mud thing is basically, I just call it a mud. It's it's for one thing, it, it's going to have some mud in it, but not necessarily everything. And for those of you who don't know what a mud is, multi-user dimension or I'm sorry, dungeon dimensions. It depends on the game, but. Um, it's, we are going to have some of those elements, but the, the big thing is is that I want to take this game and these tutorials and build something real-time that you can play through the browser, that you can have massively multi multiplayers on, and you can kind of alter it the way you want. So we're going to have some, some graphics, we're going to have inventory systems, we're going to have you know a lot of things that... that a lot of MUDs don't have, but it's gonna so it's gonna be an updated, refreshed version of MUD. So even if you don't want to make a MUD, these are good tutorials to watch just for the fact that you can learn some Node.js, you can learn some JavaScript, and and we'll be using a couple of elements of HTML5, things like that to work to where you can kind of build what you want beyond this. So with all that said, um, this video is basically gonna be getting our startup, our setup. By the end of the video, I just want us to be able to connect to multiple players, um, even if it's just a simple chat system, and then we can kind of branch out from there. So to get started, um, the first thing you want to do is get WAMP server, and you can actually get the you can actually get WAMP server from, of course, just WAMPserver.com, and you can actually look at my first tutorial set of tutorials. The first video will show you how to install this and all this, but it's really simple. Just download and install it. If you have any issues, if this icon is not green, if it's orange or red or whatever, um, of course first you want to be able to make sure that it is. You started all your services, all that good stuff. Um, make sure it's running. If you have any issues with that, you're probably better off going to the WAMP forums because they're going to be able to help you a little easier on that. You can, you can, you can go to Indie Resource, but um, you, you might be better off with the WAMP server. And and with a little bit of troubleshooting thing, I did want to say, um, if you guys have any questions on this, if you guys run into trouble, errors, whatever, don't really post them on YouTube because I don't really go a whole lot. I don't really go there a lot. And any resource was built with a, you know for everyone to come here and to ask questions and get answers and share games and things like that. There's a ton of awesome developers on here that can help you out if I can't and um, there's always people here where we're very active so it's definitely a place you want to go even if you don't want to watch the videos or you don't have any issues with the videos come here to, to show off your game or talk or chat or whatever it's it's um, excellent community so and with that said too um, all my tutorials other tutorials are in here plus other people's tutorials I will say this tutorial is going to be just like the others to where I'm not going to do anything beforehand. It's all going to be done right on the screen, all the coding, everything. I may do, of course, some copy and pasting and things to make things easier and faster. But for the most part, if I make mistakes, it's, you're going to see it and we're going to kind of learn together. It's just the way I do my tutorials. I'm not the, the greatest coder in the world. I'm going to make mistakes. And um, it's it's good that we all catch them. So that way, if you have the same mistake, you say, oh, well, he, he fixed it on screen. So now, how, now I know how it works. So anyway, back to where we're at with WAMP server. Um, so get that installed. Make sure that it's running. And basically, what WAMP server is going to do is it's going to turn your computer into a local web server to where you don't have to keep putting the stuff online. You can actually host it on your machine and not have to worry about anybody joining it or, or anything like that, or even having to have a web host. Um, so once you have WAMP server, the next thing we need, uh, the next thing you need to do is go to Node.js.org. Now we are going to be using Node.js. Don't worry if you if it sounds scary if you don't know anything about it. We're going to use it in the most simplest form. It's going to be easy. I want to walk you through the whole thing, so don't worry about it. Get that installed. Um, it's a real simple install process. I'm not going to go through it. Um, and, and once you have that installed, the next thing we have to do is we have one dependency that we need to worry about, and that is Socket.io. And Socket.io is basically just web sockets. It's basically going to help us be able to connect back and forth um, with all, from the client to the server. Um, so grab this installing right here and just copy it. Um, this npm install socket.io. And this is just at socket.io. You can go to how to use little button right there. Um, once you have that, and actually, let's um, 
let's do this first. Before we go there, let, let's make this simpler. With, with Hall's node, uh, if, if you haven't heard or used Hall's node, Hall's node was basically just a, a simple... I don't even know what to tag it as. It's not really a program, or I guess it's a module type thing that um, that I built just to make kind of give everybody a quick boost on making multiplayer games. It uses Node.js, of course, and Socket.io, but instead of having to start from scratch, you could just download Socket or Hall's Node and be ready to roll. There's only one thing you have to do is make sure you have the dependencies because this won't, of course, install the dependencies for you, and that's Socket.io. So before you before you actually go to the Socket.io, get get Node installed, get WAMP server, and then download the zip to Hall's Node. Um, once you have that, then you can go to your C drive, to your WAMP, www, and that's where this is going to be. That's where your um, WAMP's housing basically your directories or your drives for your local server. Um, you, you're probably, of course, you're not going to have all this this stuff, but um, I've already have this downloaded. You can download that Hall's node anywhere because basically you just want to open it up and and have that zip file. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our actual directory for our uh, for our game, and I'm just going to call it Mud to keep it simple. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and then inside of mud it's going to be blank so now go to Hall's node open up Hall's node grab all the files um, and extract them to C WAMP www and of course wherever you installed it and then mud let me also say um, probably should have said this earlier this works for Windows for um, Mac Linux anything so it's, it's going to work for everything it's so don't worry about that I'm on Windows 8 and using all Windows and everything. It's just that it, it, it will work on pretty much anything. WAMP server has a version for, for all of them. You have LAMP, you have MAMP, and then WAMP. Um, so once that's extracted, you have all the files here. Grab the server server.bat. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this, but I'm going to, first I'll show you the, the more comp or the I guess the, the harder way of doing it, and then I'm going to show you the easier way of doing this. So let's let's not do that just yet. First, let's um the first thing we have to do, if we were to try to run this right now, we would get an error. So once you install Node, you should have this Node.js command. Now, of course, wherever it puts it, you don't necessarily have to use this. Go, it's just easier for me. You can actually just go to start run cmd and just open up a command prompt of some, some kind. Is really all you have to do. Now, if you go to your WAMP, and, then, and I'm just taking this a slow way, and then MUD, you'll be in your directory. And then now you can just type in node space and then app.js. And I'm going to explain this in a minute. Um, so you notice that it's missing a module. That's because it's missing that socket.io. So now we have to install the socket.io. Now, installing the socket.io, you. Um, you don't want to install it actually to Node. You want to install it to each individual version, and it's up to you how you do it. But if you're new, just trust me. Do it this way because when, as you make more and more games, you you don't want all modules with with every single game. So you may have ten modules in one game and one module in the other. There's no point in having ten in all of them. So I install them individually depending on the game. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It's not going to kill you. So let's get let's get Socket.io installed and get all these dependencies and this installation out of the way so we can start working on our game. And trust me on this, I know all this may sound complicated right now. Once it's done, it's done for good. It's over. We can. It's the rest of it becomes really simple. So copy that npm install Socket.io, and we are going to cd backslash node, and then it's underscore modules. And then here's where we're actually going to install socket.io. Enter. And I've already installed it, but it's going to go through a little installation. Just wanted to show you what it looks like. It's actually going to go out and get everything for you. Um, and you should be done. If yours has more than this or yours doesn't look the same, don't worry about it. I already have it installed, so I don't know what the real difference is. But So now we can actually see if it works. And we have oh no wonder I gotta go back a directory so now go back a directory and try again and we now have let's go ahead and allow access we now have uh, it, the server running now if we want to if you notice in here we have an index.html and this is what Hall's node is it's a real simple setup to where you can get started really quick and let me show you actually how simple it is if we go to localhost slash mud or whatever directory you used and then index.html hit enter 
you'll see that we actually just joined the server. That's out of the box what Halt's Node does. It gives it a real simple deal. And to kind of give you a little better look at what's going on here, let's uh, throw this one up over here. Let's um, throw this one up over here. And we will copy this, this. And so now we have two players online. So if we say, hey, it's me. Can't hit enter because that's one little function I didn't code in there. It'll refresh it. But you can see that it's there. They can talk back and forth, and you can have thousands of, of little windows doing this. <clears throat> so that's basically what. And and let me just say this is the most simplistic form of Node.js. It has rooms and other things like that already built into it. But we we're not really going to get into that. But my main point in this video was to get us to, to here to where hey we've got the we've got the, the networking back and forth and actually if you want to pull up the server box you can see that it is talking back and forth to each other we are eventually going to change the way some of this works and, and stuff like that once we get into the game but for now this is a good starting point to where that quickly and in, in just you know 10 minutes we've we've got a, a, a nice um, server system going up to where now we can start passing messages back and forth I am going to explain how this server system works how Node.js and JavaScript talk back and forth but as we go we'll get into that so let's do a couple more things we don't need that we don't need that um, let's go ahead and we'll leave that open for now um, let me show you now the easier way to do it because every time you don't want to have to go into that run and then type in those commands so what I did is I created the server dot bat you do need to edit it so just click edit and if you're on Windows 8 and it messes with you just hit run anyway all you got to do is change this to the directory of whatever mine was mud so whatever you you named yours just change it to that save it and now when you run server.bat it will automatically start for you the only problem you're going to have is, is if we get an error and you'll see this later on this is automatically going to close really quick so then we'll have to go back to our developer box but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that point when we get there so now that we have that set up there's just two more dependencies we need to worry about jQuery and bootstrap uh, let's start with jQuery. Just go to jQuery.com, go to the download page, and this top one right here, download the compressed production query. jQuery, if this is a different version, don't worry about it. It's fine because I'm sure people are going to be watching this months or years beyond this, and it, it, it should all still work. So if you click on this link, you're going to end up with just a bunch of garbled, which is the minified version of this. Just right click, save link as and then you can save it right there inside of mud now let's go ahead and do this let's do let's create a new folder and let's call it um actually we could probably keep it in the modules form now let's let's go ahead and just put uh let's call it um actually let's do that let's make it simple i don't want a whole bunch of directories uh yeah let's put it right here in this modules i don't want to call it one and let's save that and then the next thing you need to do is get this map file otherwise you'll get an error save link as and looks like all that's good save and so that's done those two are done the next thing we want to grab is bootstrap now if you don't know what bootstrap is this is twitter's open source um, basically css it um, it's a lot like jquery ui if you've ever used that if you if you haven't used that and you're just starting into this don't worry it gets simple um, this this is a great starting point for you because you can use jQuery UI but Bootstrap to me has a couple more features in it that I really like that um, that really help us really gets this really boosted really quickly um, so let me just show you some things real quick uh, let's see the grid system on this is is really neat now this is probably the biggest thing I'll I'll, I'll want to show you as far as the grid system and and how well it, it puts your page in, in the proper places and how well it is to, to put things, especially for games. Um, the, the Twitter bootstrap to me is one of the best things for games. So it, you see, it gives you kind of real simple, instead of having to, to, to CSS code all this stuff for, up for yourself, it's, it's pretty much already in here for you. So and we'll go through a lot of this later. But anyway, so we need to download bootstrap which I've already done and it was on that front page there and because it's like five megs I went ahead and just downloaded it and put it right here so open up bootstrap now there's a lot in here you don't need all this this stuff whoops not too far there we go um, you don't need a whole lot of what's in boot what's in bootstrap because it gives you a lot of examples and things like that all you really need is 
It looks like I'm getting some kind of error. Okay. So with, well, I guess I got knocked out of there. Anyway, with Bootstrap, all you need is to go into this DIST, which is, I guess, distro. And the first thing we need is the JS. Now, you can use the minified version or the JS version. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just grab the minified version. It's just a compressed version. I don't plan on this game editing the actual Bootstrap source, but if you ever need to, you would want to use the regular JS. So we're going to extract that to our www mud and then slash, whoops, wrong slash, slash, and then our modules folder. And OK. And then the next thing we need is the CSS. Now we have the theme and the min. The um, the theme is if is going to be for actual like themed out in different colors, kind of like the way jQuery UI did and all that. I'm not too interested in that. We may actually grab that later, but for now I'm just going to get the plain old. Uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and just grab them both so we have them both. And I'm going to grab min on both of them. So let's extract those. Also to the mud slash modules and now we have them both so that is basically we, they also have the fonts in here that you can grab but I, I'm not going to grab those this, this really this is all we need out of the out of the bootstrap that gives us all of bootstrap so the next thing we need to do is actually tie them into the index.html and all that and I don't want this video to go on too long so I'm gonna we're gonna stop here in video two we're gonna get started on that